So I'm going to show you how to fillet fish the proper way. So let's get started. So filleting fish is one of my favorite things to do and once you get really good at it, it almost becomes meditative. And the technique I'm going to teach you today is what I learned in Japan and it's the same technique when making sashimi or sushi. So the name of this technique is called Sangmai Oroshi and Sang means three. Mai means peace and Oroshi means to fill it. So the three pieces we're talking about here are the two fillets and the center bone connecting them. So without further ado, let's begin. So here is our beautiful white bass. And the three things you wanna look for when filleting fresh fish is the eyes, the skin, and the gills. Now the eyes should be bulbous and almost protruding and they should be clear and not cloudy. The skin should smell of the sea or if it's a fresh water fish then it should smell a bit of the lake. It should also not be slimy and the skin and the scales should be tight to the flesh. Now lastly the gills should be dark red or dark pink and they shouldn't be discolored in any way. They should also not be slimy. Now here I can tell that this fish is quite bloated and what that usually means is that there's some roe inside and that the fish is pregnant. Now the only way we're going to find out is once we gut the fish. So let's move on to the next step. But first I'm going to remove some of the excess scales that the fishmonger might have missed. And all you have to do here is run your knife towards the head of the fish from tail to head and the scales should come right off. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the head. And what I want to do here is angle my knife behind the pectoral fin and the pelvic fin. So I'm going to slice down one side and when I turn it around and do the other side, I should be able to use the heel of my knife to cut right through that neck bone. And there is our fish head that we can use for stock now. So next I'm going to remove the intestines and every round fish is going to have this small hole here called a urinary pore. And what I want to do is take the tip of my knife and run my knife down that urinary pore all the way to where the head used to be. And here we are as expected some beautiful fish roe. So these intestines right here you can simply toss out unless you really love fish liver. Here I am just being careful to remove this fish row and I'm gonna have to do a video on this how to cure these fish row sacs. So a bit of grated fish roe can provide some amazing saltiness and savoriness to some dishes. So I'm definitely gonna have to make a video on that. So next we're gonna reveal the bloodline and some fish are gonna have this membrane where the bloodline's hidden underneath. So we're just gonna make an incision right through that. So next I'm gonna show you how to clean the bloodline and this is really important to do because any bit of blood on that flesh is gonna give an iron taste to the fish. So this little tool right here I'm gonna to use to clean the bloodline and this is a traditional tool used in Japan for this specific purpose. And it's basically just a bunch of bamboo skewers that have been tied together with some elastic bands. So you can do this under the sink but I'm gonna show you over a cold bowl of water. So all you're gonna do is use the pointed edge Edge of those bamboo skewers and just simply scrape that bloodline until it's all nice and cleaned. So now I'm going to clean and dry my board. And here is our bloodline all nice and cleaned. 
So next you wanna dry your fish and it's really important to keep everything dry when filleting fish. You wanna keep your knife dry. You wanna make sure to dry the fish and you wanna make sure that your board is dry. And this is gonna allow you to make cleaner cuts. So now it's time to fill it. And you always wanna start with the right side fillet. And our first incision is going to be on the belly side and we wanna make sure we keep our knife parallel to that center bone. And what we wanna do is make sure the tip of our knife is flexed downwards towards the bone so we're not cutting through any flesh. Next, we're gonna turn our fish around and we're gonna make an incision down the spine. And we wanna make sure our knife is, of course, parallel to that center bone. So because there are no pin bones from the center of the fish downwards to the tail, we're gonna easily be able to make a gap right here. And the reason for this is because the tail has to be able to easily flex and move quickly in order for the fish to swim. So the only barrier keeping this fillet from us removing it is this backbone right here. So what we wanna do now is position our knife like so while holding the tail and we're gonna be able to cut through that backbone. And this is going to release the fillet. And here is our first fillet. And this belly right here is the most delicious part of the fish. And here are the fish ribs. And this is where they end. And this is where they begin. So next, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side, making sure to keep the tip of my knife against that bone as I make my cuts. So again, once the tail section is removed and we have this gap right here, we can now slice through that backbone. And there is our second fillet. And here is our center bone and the goal is for it to be almost transparent. There should be no flesh remaining on that bone. So next, I'm gonna show you how to remove the ribs. And with my knife pointed upwards, I'm going to make an incision along those ribs, disconnecting them from the flesh. Now by doing this, it's going to make it a lot easier to put my knife underneath those ribs and just smoothly cut along them and make sure that my knife is pointed upwards so that I don't cut through any of that belly. And I'm gonna do that once again with the second fillet.
Now here I have some fishbone tweezers and our final task is to remove the pin bones. And the most important thing when removing pin bones from fish is to hold the flesh with your fingers and this will help keep the flesh on the fillet as you're removing the bones. And I'll do the same thing with the second fillet. So here is our white bass filleted. And there you have it. I hope this video helped not only with understanding the how, but also the why when it comes to filleting round fish. And ever since I learned this technique, I had a much deeper appreciation for sushi. The amount of care and precision to detail that the Japanese show for fish is something I deeply respect. If we didn't have food, we wouldn't be able to survive. So maintaining that respect for our ingredients is definitely something a part of every chef's philosophy. So to all you watching, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you like fish filleting videos, I'm gonna be coming out with a bunch in the near future. But until then, keep on cooking.